Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace, in all circumstances take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. Hallelujah! 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 
Appreciate you, O oh Lord, for who you are, ancient of the days, the Lord of hosts, for who you are, the Lord of life, for who you are, our victor, for who you are, the resurrection and the life, for who you are, the bread of life, for who you are, the light of the world, for who you are, the river of life. For whom you are Jehovah Nishi, we bless you because you have never lost any battle. To you be all the glory. To you be all the honor. Lord, for our little ones, we say glory and honor be to your name. Lord, for every mother in this house, Lord, we worship you. For every sister in this house, Lord, we worship you. For every father and every brother in this land, in this house, Lord, we worship you. We say you are worthy. In our lives, you are worthy. In our families, you are worthy, O oh Lord. Lord, in your church, you are worthy. Hallelujah. Glory be to the Lamb of God. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we thank you for your word. Once again, speak to us. Once again, quicken us to hear. Once again, quicken us to be doers of your word. That your name might be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. And let everybody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let everybody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let everybody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Sit down, please. Last Sunday, we started talking about putting on the whole armor of God. The command of God. We had the instruction of the Lord 
through his apostle Paul, enjoining the whole Christians to put on the whole armor of God, trying to remind us that we are in a battlefield and no soldier goes to war leaving himself empty or going to war with empty handedness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so that is a word that he reminded us. And we will continue in that very vein today. Last Sunday, we saw the need for us to put on the whole armor of God. We saw that uh, these armors are powerful and mighty in God. We also realized that they are spiritual weapons and not physical weapons. Because physical weapon ha weapons have limitation, but spiritual weapons have no limitation. Praise the name of the Lord. And so we did understand also that because the battle we are facing is not a, a physical battle, but it is a spiritual battle, and therefore it demands a spiritual weapon. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And so we saw that one of the first weapons we, we were enjoined to put on is the belt of truth. And we discovered that a truth is the foundation and the most important uh, engagement in everything one does in life. Because if foundation is built upon lies, then that foundation sooner or later will crumble. And after that, we also saw the breastplate of righteousness, uh, which actually is what uh, covers and protects your chest, your heart, you know, because the heart is very, very important. The heart must be guided. The heart must be protected. And that was the reason why the Bible tells us uh, in Proverbs 4.23, uh, say, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Then the third one, we also saw the what? The shoes of the gospel of peace. Hallelujah. So we know and we did understand that uh, no soldier entered the war front, uh, I mean, uh, barefooted. You must put on the right uh, shoe, the right uh, footwear you must put on so that you will become a prepared and rugged uh, soldier. And we saw what happened uh, when David uh, decided to go and fight a uh, glory uh, that, uh, that the king Saul knew that no one, no soldier goes to, as a matter of fact, no general will send his uh, soldier to the war front barefooted. He must be well kitted. And so he tried to put on David uh, the, the shoe, the arm, and uh, the, shield, the shield and all those things, but he could not. Uh, why? Because they were physical and not spiritual. So David said, no, these are physical weapons. They have not been tested. And so they cannot stand the test of time. But then he revealed to the king, hallelujah, that uh, yes, you are used to these physical armors or weapons, but I have a tested one, the spiritual armors. And so when he put them and confronted the giant that uh, was master in using the physical armor, then we saw the supremacy of the spiritual armor over the physical weapon. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so this morning we are going to finish uh, the, the remaining three. So the fourth one we are going to look at today is the shield of faith. I want us to go once again to Ephesians chapter 6. And we begin to read from verse 10. So finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand 
in the evil day and having done all to stand stand therefore having guarded your waist with the belt hallelujah having put on the breastplate of righteousness and having showed your feet with the prepare with the preparation of the gospel of peace verse 16 above all take up the shield of faith we wish you will be able to quench all the fairy dust of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god hallelujah praise the name of the lord and so we see in these are last two verses 16 and 17 three other very very crucial uh, armors or weapons has been put forward there and the and then the one we're looking at now is the shield of faith you see the apostle made, made it very very clear say above all above all <laughs> above all so after you have guarded put on the belt of truth after you have pulled the breastplate of righteousness and after you have worn that very shoe of the gospel, preparation of the gospel of peace. He said, above all this, you should do what? Eh? Above all this, do what? The shield of faith. Take the shield of faith. Hallelujah. And he's telling you for, for that shield is already provided. And he said, you have to lay hold of it. Because with it, you'll be able to do what? To quench all the fairy dust of the evil one. You know what is a, what is that very fairy dust? It's talking about arrows that the enemy fires at a child of God. Every moment, every second of the day, the enemy is busy shooting arrows, fairy dust at the child of God. And you know what? It takes the it takes the shield of faith, the shield of faith. You know what is shield? Don't forget the picture we we tried to paint a last Sunday that uh, the, the uh, and uh, uh, a Roman soldier then first of all has to be well kitted, and so we saw the the the, the boot that is called the 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 shoe of uh, of the gospel and so we saw the breastplate of righteousness and which protects uh, his uh, chest and today we know that our soldiers or the mobile police they move around with what bullet approved that covers their chest both front and back hallelujah and so but now if you move out there and even in partition there you will see the mobile police uh, you see, this is a big shield. I mean, you know what? When, once they are a riot, once they are moving, they cannot move without that very protection, protector. It's a shield. They hold it like this. I know what, what happens because these Araskas are, are busy throwing stones and firing a lot of things at them. And they use it to do what? To protect and, div and, and divert all those that arrows that the enemy is firing or even the bullet the enemy is firing at them you know don't forget that uh, after you have taken on after you have put on the shield uh, i mean the, the the truth the the, the shoe of the gospel the breastplate of righteousness uh, then you put on the the shield of faith you have to take it up uh. he said take up the shield of faith meaning at no point in time in your life i will you lay it down because the enemy is busy two four seven every moment of the day firing that affair that that's or that evil arrows at a child of god and so we cannot be complacent and not be ignorant to do what? To say, oh, I, I'm tired. Let me lay that very shade of faith for a moment. No. Every moment you must put it in place. And I want you to know that uh, it is faith. Every other, every other armor is provoked by faith. The belt, you lay it on, you put it on by faith. 
The breastplate of righteousness, you put it on by faith. The shoe for the preparation of the gospel, you put it on by what? Faith. And this shield is telling us that we should lay hold of. It's also there. You do what? You take it by faith. Hallelujah. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because faith is the currency we use to do business with God. Hallelujah. And so the only thing that, that, that can please God, the only thing that can make you successful in your dealings with God is faith. So above all, take up the shield of faith with which you should be able to extinguish every fairy that the enemy throws at you. Praise the name of the Lord. And so I want you to know that without a faith, you cannot receive anything from God. Your faith is what activates the truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the power of the gospel, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit. How? How? Because you do not see. You do not see the, them, is it not? They are not physical. They are not physical. You do not see them. And so for you to lay hold of them, it must be by what? By faith. And the Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Hallelujah. So you see that faith is the tangibility of the things that you have hoped for. Hallelujah. Faith makes that very hope tangible. You know, you hope for what you have not seen. Is it not? Oh, I, I'm hoping that at this, this, this chair, it will, I, will, I, will, I will buy this chair tomorrow. It is a hope. But do you know what faith does? Faith makes at this very chair tangible that I can touch it by faith. I don't know that which you are hoping. From God, you can only touch it by faith. You assess it by faith. Praise the Lord. And so, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Please, if you go to the courtroom and they say, can you provide an evidence? They will say, yes, and this is the remote. And this remote is the remote of this very air conditioner. And I was here when Brother Henry put on this very air condition. And so how come that he is saying that he's not the one that put it on? Say, I was there. And now everybody is seeing what? The evidence. And so do you know what faith does? That thing that is not seen, faith makes it to become evident. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And so I want us to understand why the shield of faith is very, very critical in our walk with God. One of the armors that we can never joke with. Because this very shield of faith is defensive. Hallelujah. With it, you defend yourself from every weapon the enemy will ever throw at you. Hallelujah. And that is why it must be in place at every minute of the day. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So, when sickness comes your way, when sickness attacks your body, when there is a family problem or marital issue or financial issue, Take up the shield of faith. Hallelujah. Take up the shield of faith. Oh, when sickness, when you are feeling headache, take up the shield of faith. How do you do it? 
You remember the scripture in our first Peter chapter 2, verse 24. For by his stripes we are healed. We take up the shield of faith. With it, you are seen. I am healed. I am healed. Oh, when they say that there is an influenza, an outbreak of one disease or the other in town, you take up the shield of faith. For a thousand may fall at my side. <laughs> and ten thousand at my right hand side. It shall not come near my dwelling. Take up the shield of faith. It becomes a defensive uh, weapon that God has made available unto us. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. When mountains, when you are surrounded by mountains of life, that mountain is standing before you. What do you do? You command them to be removed by faith. When storms of life are combating your life, what do you do? You command the storms of life as Jesus said, did. Peace be still. Praise the name of the Lord. You know the story of uh, the centurion in Matthew chapter 8. He, he comes to Jesus and he tells him, my servant is sick. Speak the word and he will be healed. And not Jairus, but Jairus comes to Jesus and says, Master, my only daughter is sick at the point of death. Please come and do what? Heal him. You see the levels of faith. Praise the Lord. This, this, this centurion was operating on a very, very high level. And the Jairus was operating also at his own level of faith. But guess what? What is important is not the level. What is important is that both of them have the faith. The faith that accepts the promise that was given. Hallelujah. But why I'm bringing these two, to these two examples is for you. There is need for you to walk up your faith. Tell your brother, walk up your faith. Tell him again, walk up your faith. Hallelujah. And Jesus said, never in Israel have I seen this type of faith. Beloved, walk up your faith. For each and every one of us have received a measure of faith. And Jesus said, verily I say unto you, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, a mustard seed, a monster said, Thou shalt say to this very mountain, Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and nothing shall be impossible. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. That is the reason why faith plays an important role in our walk with God. Glory be to His name. Hallelujah. If you faint in the day of adversity, how small is your faith? That is the reason why we must do what? Walk up our faith. Walk up our faith. Because every day, the days of adversity are all over us. Hallelujah. And that's the reason why we must walk up our faith. Beloved, build your faith. And how do you build up this very faith? Jude 120 will tell us, say, Beloved, build up your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. By praying in the Holy Ghost. How many of you here have, have, uh, have received the baptism of the Holy Ghost with evidence of praying in tongues? If you have, that is a mighty weapon of how you can build up your faith. Hallelujah. If you have not, that is a challenge for you to begin to get hungry and begin to ask God for that very baptism. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, walk up your faith. Build up your faith. How do you do that? For faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Yes, how do you do that? Read the word of God. 
Meditate upon the word of God. Study the word of God. Yes, memorize the word of God. And um, Moses told Joshua, Let the word of this Lord depart not from your mouth day and night, but meditate therein, that you may have good success, that you may be prosperous wherever you go and have a good success. Beloved, the battle is raging, but victory is assured. Amen. If we put on this whole armor of God, that is men available unto us. Glory be to God. And then in verse 17, we see the, the next uh, armor that we must put on, and it's called the helmet of salvation. This is another weapon that God has made available to us. Where do we put on the helmet? Our head. You see, the head is just like uh, the, 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 the house of uh, the engine of the, of the life. That is uh, where your brain is, you know. And uh, <laughs> if this uh, brain is... Uh, <laughs> if this brain is scattered, nothing happens again. And don't forget also that... Uh, when you put on the helmet... You use it to cover your, your head, is it not? What does, it gives you an identification. Your head is what identifies you. Oh, how do you think that uh, when you want to do your passport or for if, if there's a wanted criminal, the, the, the dust are just has snapped the body or the leg or the hand, what do they capture? The head. Very, very important. Because once the head is open the enemy can strike at any time but say put on the helmet of salvation with it you are covered with it you are protected praise the name of the lord and and it is very very important and serious you know we see people that are ride a machine every day and when when the when the when there's an accident and that one is not putting on the helmet. What you see, the head scatters and the brain even comes out. Praise the Lord. But if you see, if you are wearing that very helmet, yes, there is everything, that, uh, there's every possibility that uh, it is going to protect you to a good, reasonable extent. Praise the name of the Lord. Helmet of salvation. Hallelujah. So that is what identifies us, and it also protects our head. Praise the name of the Lord. As a child of God, when you put on the helmet of salvation, the enemy knows. <laughs> the enemy knows that you are what? Protected. And so he cannot fire at your head anyhow. Praise the name of the Lord. And when you put on the helmet of salvation, he knows who's you, who, who, I mean, where you belong. He know that you belong to Christ. Hallelujah. And because you belong to the Christ, he becomes careful and scared. Because he know that uh, any weapon he fires at your head will be a wasted effort. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. In Acts of Apostles chapter 19 and verse 15, we saw the story of the seven sons of Sceva. You remember what happened? Remember what happened? When they, when, when they came and they want to cast out all the demons, and what did the demons say? All I know, Jesus and I, who are thou? Uh -huh. And who are thou? Because they were wearing no identification. There was no helmet of salvation upon them. Because that is what gives them the identification. And now, you see how we become so prone and vulnerable when we have our head open. Praise the name of the Lord. The helmet of our salvation, beloved, it is very, 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 very important. Hallelujah. The more you, ad you identify with Jesus, the more your helmet of salvation becomes a stronger. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the reason why it is very, very important. 
The, the, the fifth one is called the sword of the spirit, as we also see in verse 17. And take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Beloved, this armor is basically the only offensive weapon among all the armor that we have already spoken about. It is very, very offensive. Don't forget that. Uh, don't forget that the shield of faith is for what defense. But the sword of the spirit is what for offense. The enemy comes against you, <laughs> and he said, "You remember what he told he told them? Eve, did God actually say? He said yes. God did say." But when he came to Jesus, and he said, if you are the son of God, command this stone to become bread. Jesus said, come on, come on. Hear you, Satan. It is written. It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone. Oh, all these things have been given unto me, have been delivered to me, and I give to whosoever will. If you want this glory, bow down and worship me. He says, Satan, hear you, it is written, thou shalt worship God and God alone. He takes him to the highest of pinnacle and, and shows him and says, Put, fall down, for God has said that he will give his angel charge over you so that you will not strike yourself. He said, be gone from me, Satan. Thou shalt not tempt the Lord your God. You see, when a child of God is filled with the word of God, you see, we, we always emphasize the, the, the importance of the word of God. Number one, you must know the word of God for yourself. You must believe the word of God for yourself. And you must act upon the word of God for yourself. Hallelujah. It's very, very important. You discover that uh, what the word of God cannot do, nothing else can do it. Did you hear me? What the word of God cannot do, nothing else can do it. Why? He said, for I honor my word above my name. Psalm 138 verse 2b, let somebody read it. Say, for I honor my word above my name. And so when the enemy comes to, to, with his word, listen to me, brother. The battle we are fighting is word versus word. Are you hearing me? Yes. It is not a battle of a sword against sword or AK-47 against AK-47. But it is a battle of word versus word. Your word versus the word of your enemy. The word of God versus the word of Satan. Don't forget that when Goliath has stood for those 40 days, what was he going doing? He was only speaking a word, challenging the armies of Israel. And nobody was equipped with the word of God to challenge him back. They had no defense. They had no defense. But when David came, and he made up his mind to, to go and uh, fight him. You know, Gloria, look at him. See, he despised him. Oh, you are coming to me with a, with a sling, with a catapult. Say, am I what? An animal? Am I a bird? <laughs> he said, come, I will, dis I will deal with you today and kill you and throw you out. Your, your cups to the, to, the, to the best of the air. That was what he told David. And what did David say? Let us go there quickly, please. First and Samuel chapter 17. Hallelujah. Yes, okay. But yes. Mm. So that has magnified thy word above all thy name. Mm -hmm. So that is, yes, so the word of God, anything the word of God cannot do, 
God cannot do it. Why? He said, I have magnified my word above my name. Praise the name of the Lord. In First Samuel, are we there? Yes. Verse 41. So the Philistine came and began drawing near to David. And the man who bore the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and a good looking. Verse 43. So the Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you came to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed, cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and the beasts of the field. Verse 45. And then David said to the Philistine, You come to me with a sword, with a spear, and we javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistines to the best of the earth and the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. You see, the battle is word versus word. So before David actually threw that very stone, he has already won the battle. Hallelujah. And so that is the offensive weapon we have. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 1 said, Who has believed our words? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? If you believe the the report of the Lord, the report of the Lord is the word of God, is it not? If you believe it, then the power we are talking about will be revealed in your life and in your situations. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so the word of God you know, the word of God you believe is powerful. It's a very, very powerful tool at your disposal to use at any time and anywhere. What word you know you use before the enemy. It is only the word you know that you will use. The word you know is what you will use. You will not use the word I know. (laughs) That was what happened to the sons of Sceva. They they say, we come against you, we we command you in the name of the, in the the name of Jesus, who apostle Paul preaches. They don't know that very word of God at all. Hallelujah. Oh, David said, you come against me in the name of your God. Have you not listened that I, and he cursed David by his God. And he cursed David by his God. And you have giants of your life still cursing you by, the, by their gods. You have the strong men and the strong women of, of, of your life Stay cursing you by their gods. But yet you have he that is called the king of kings and lord of lords. Who is the god, the, the ruler among all gods. And you are keeping silent. And you say, my God will fight my battle. He will fight your battle through you. Through the word you have, through his word that you, you have known. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is the challenge we have in our day. Why do you think that a Satan is serious even today, diverting the attention of children of God from studying the word of God? It did not start today. Because once the word of God is stolen from you, number one, you are now naked, defenseless. 
That was what happened to Adam and Eve. He first of all took away the word. And the Bible recorded in Matthew chapter, chapter 13 that the sower went to do what? To sow. And as he saw, as he was sowing, scattering the seed, what, what, what was happening? That the birds of the air were serious also doing what? Eating up the world, taking up the world, stealing the world. Hallelujah. That is the plan of the enemy to steal the word of God from your heart so that you become what? Helpless. You become what? Powerless. Hallelujah. For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two edged sword. It does not matter the weapon the enemy is bringing against you. The word of God is tested to stand and overcome them. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to God. And so take it as a challenge today to begin to study the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16. Let the word of God dwell in you richly. And when the word of God dwells in you richly, what happens? Nothing can penetrate you. Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. First of all, you are totally shielded from whatsoever the, those are fiery deaths the enemy is throwing against you. The word of God is already resident in you. It's already the foundation of your heart, the foundation of your life, and therefore you are standing upon a sure foundation. And Jesus said, He that hears my word and does it, I will liken him to a wise man that builds his house upon a rock and the rain came and the wind came and he stood praise the name of the lord Hallelujah. beloved the the, the the arrows of the wicked the wicked is the enemy is busy manufacturing different arrows more with with greater precision than ever and the and the sons of the kingdom are, are busy sleeping Busy sleeping. I know here some of, some, some, of, some of us here can sit down for five hours, for three hours, and watch what? Films. <laughs> but take a message, a preaching, a teaching that is for one hour. It is hard amongst us here to find out one, two people that will sit down, put on the chair until it is over. You know now. You know now. No, that is how we deceive ourselves. And you will stand and begin to. Okay. Not... Okay, okay. I will not say this very well. <laughs> Hallelujah. Baby Lord, God is calling us to awake again. He wants us to not to be ignorant. He wants us to be aware of the provisions he has made for us to succeed and triumph over the enemies in life. Hallelujah. You are there. Every day the enemy is a the enemy is troubling your marriage. And you think that is, is what? It's normal. <laughs> you go to bed. Okay. But you have to arise in the anger of God with the word of God in your mouth and begin to contend for your marriage. Oh, the enemy comes and every time you labor and labor and you do not see it. What do you do? You think that it is normal. No, it is one of the hidden arrows of the enemy against your finance. You rise up and begin to say, what word do you, are you going to use? Yeah, give me. When you want to pray for the labors of your hand, tell me. The one scripture you know that you can you can use. Let somebody tell me. Please, I'm no, I said tell me. What word can you use? What scripture can you use? 
Hallelujah. But as you are going, I say, God, I, I'm going out today. Don't forget your word that in every labor there is profit. And therefore, I, I'm going out today, oh God, to labor. My labor today shall not be in vain. It shall be profitable. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, you want to take a decision and you don't know, you are confused. Huh? How do you go? Do I take left or right? Huh? Lord, don't forget your word huh? that you will cancel me with your eyes upon me. Oh, that, that, that the steps of the righteous is ordered of God. Hallelujah. Oh, when you come to a crossroad, you say, look back. And you will hear a whisper. A, a whisper that will tell you, turn left or turn right. You are praying for direction. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, every time sickness will come into your, into your family and begin to, to, begin to scatter your program. Oh, you rise up in the night and say, not again. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, ah, I make a hedge of the fire of the Holy Ghost around my children. Ah! Praise the name of the Lord. And so, beloved, all I'm telling you is that a God has given us every weapon we need in order to win every battle of life. God has given us every weapon we need in order to challenge the weapons of the enemy. Glory be to God. Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 and 11. Read quickly. Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 and 11. It says, as the, as the rain comes down from the heaven, is it not? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We take it again from verse 10. For as the rain comes down and the snow from, he from heaven and do not return there but water the earth and make it a bring forth and board that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. The word of God can never return back to him void. The word of God is bound to prosper. It has everything, everything in it to accomplish what it has been destined to accomplish. But the first question is, are you just speaking it from your, from your heart or from your mouth? If, you, if you're just speaking it only from your mouth and it's not already rooted in your heart, it becomes an empty word because faith is of the heart. For out of the abundance of the heart, then the mouth will speak, it becomes powerful. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory be to God. And so I want you to open your mouth and begin to talk to God. Begin to bless his name. Begin to honor him. Thank him that he has a made available unto you. All you need to be a victor, all you need to triumph in the battles of this life. Apostle Paul said, finally, brethren, finally, brethren, put on the whole armor of God. That we may be able to stand against the wiles of the enemy. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, beloved. 
Open your mouth and begin to say, Lord, thank you for the weapons you have made available unto me. Hallelujah. Begin to say, Lord, I receive grace, O oh God, to put on the whole armor of God. I receive grace to put on the whole armor of God. We receive the grace to put on the whole armor of God. Yes, with this armor, O oh God, I thank you because we have been equipped, O oh God, and fortified uh, to win every battle, to stand against every challenge of the wicked. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. But as Father, we thank you, we bless your name for all what you have done in our life today. And we thank you for your word, O oh Lord. We pray, O oh Lord, that your word that we have heard today will be doer and not hearer alone, O oh Lord. Father, teach us to put on the whole armor, O oh Lord, that we will be able to stand against the devices of the enemy, O oh my Father, my God. Father, we commit our children to your evil hands, O oh Lord. Father, we cover them with the blood of Jesus. And we say, Lord, let your hand of protection be over them. Let your hand of healing be over them. Father, we come against every influencer that wants to attack them as from now on in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we speak healing over our family, over the body of Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, as we go out, O oh Lord, Father, may you watch over us, O oh Lord. Our going out and coming in is in your hand, O oh Lord. May you bless us as we go out, as, as we come in, O oh Lord, my God. For your name to be glorified in our life. Amen. And you alone, O oh Lord, will receive all the glory and honor and adoration, O oh Lord. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May we share the grace. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. We shall not die, but live to declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. You shall not die, but live to declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. I shall not die, but live to declare the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Amen. Shalom. Amen.